Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? I am super hot today, the wood stove. I wasn't thinking, I didn't know it was supposed to be like 35 today and sunny. So I loaded the fireplace up and now we're all just dying of heat stroke. So we're in shorts and tank top today. Um, today, uh, this video is going to be about fermenting vegetables. Um, we started a couple of weeks ago with doing gardenia, which is fermenting carrots, cauliflower, and peppers together. Um, so every time I do a video, she's always in the spring. Kiki, get out of here, you little turkey. Um, so, and Dan and I love it. Um, when we have salad, we'll usually put that on our salad. <clears throat> um, Usually about once a day, we're just eating it raw, too. It's really, really good for you. Got a lot of probiotics in it, um, prebiotics, all that good stuff. Um, so we've really been enjoying it. Sometimes I'll get the kids to eat, like, one piece, but that's not very often. So I'm going to be doing sauerkraut for the first time. Um, it's kind of the same process as you would any other vegetable. So um, we'll go through that um but we haven't been doing a video for about a month now maybe a little more um beginning of february i ended up falling in get out of here there's food here i ended up tripping on creed's shoe and i hurt my ankle pretty bad it's my left foot and ankle which i had reconstructive surgery on when i was 15 um, and he did a whole bunch of stuff to it then, so I protected it this long, and I just, all my body weight was on it, rolled it, there was quite a big, nasty few pops, um, I think that was like the first weekend of February, we ended up going to urgent care the next day, um, and, uh, it, from what they could tell, nothing was broken, I saw my foot surgeon about a week later, um, my insurance won't cover an MRI for unless you're like a month or so out from the date of injury. So he did x-rays. Um, I was on crutches for about three weeks. I've just this last week started getting off crutches. Um, Dan ended up having to go for go looking for a job because he got no contracting since beginning of December. Um, and at some point we need income. So he applied to some jobs, and within like an hour, this one company called him. Um, that was last Wednesday they called him, and they said, can you start Monday? So that kind of threw us into a whirlwind of getting him ready. He hasn't worked for another company in whew, almost six years now. So um, right now, it's a two- to three-month project. It's... Um, it's uh, 40 plus hours a week, so he'll probably be working Monday through Saturday. It's going to be a bit of an adjustment. Um, last year, I think he worked January, February, March, and then like April, May, June, he was home fixing up the house, our old house. So we got used to having him home. And then I think he did like maybe one or two other projects. So last year, about six months out of the year, he was home. And we kind of got used to that. Um, it's always an adjustment period. There's always ebbs and flows to contracting. So um, we would get used to him being home for a while. And then get used to him not being home and working. And so he's been home since December. Um, you know, there's a lot of little things he does. And a lot of big things he does. That make it so I don't have to think about it. And so... Um, you know, and have him gone again. It's like, oh, wait, okay, so now I have to start doing this, this, and this, because he'll be gone. And he kind of got a taste of that when I was on crutches, because I couldn't put any weight on it, like I said, for almost three weeks. Um, so, I, he had to, he and the kids did all the dishes, all the cooking, everything. I do have to say, I read through, like, four books in those three weeks. Um, I got quite antsy. You know, the first day I was like, oh, I get to sit and do absolutely nothing. But then by the second day, I was like, oh, I got to do something. And I, by the third week, I was like, I I don't care. I have to walk on this thing. Um, 
So as far as they can tell, nothing's broken, but there could be some torn ligaments. Um, I've been wearing an ankle brace to keep it in one position, um, which helps a lot. It feels a lot better, but there's still two spots. One where a bone had gotten dislodged um, from rolling it. Um, that spot still hurts, and then there's one ligament that still just kills me. So if I don't have my brace on, it's very painful to walk. Um, by the end of the afternoon, evening, I'm usually, it's quite sore and a bit swollen, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Things gotta get done, and I'm no stranger to pain, so we just get on with it. Um, so we're kind of, it was kind of a weird weekend, you know, we knew that he was going back to work. Um, so he did as much as he could bring in firewood and stuff like that. So I won't have to do that while he's gone because that would probably just be too much on my foot. But, um, getting back into the routine of packing lunches the night before, he has to leave at like six in the morning. So I usually get up with him at about five. I cook him breakfast while he does his Bible reading. I'll finish packing his lunch. I try to do it the night before. Um, and then we'll kind of sit and have coffee or whatever, sit and chat while he eats his breakfast and then he heads off and then I go back to bed <laughs> for about an hour till the kids get up and then we're up and going. Um, one thing that's kind of annoying is he got up throughout the night to take care of the fireplace when I had hurt my foot. So I got used to sleeping much more uninterrupted sleep. And now I feel like I have a newborn again because I'm getting up three times a night for the fireplace, getting up at five to do his breakfast, going back to bed. So there's like four times I'm getting up throughout the night. Um, so that's going to be interesting, but we shall survive. Um, I want to thank some of you because um, some of you have gotten, I know in one video I talked about how much Creed and Sailor love dot to dots and mazes and stuff like that. And so some of you actually sent us some stuff and bought us some dot to dot books and crafting paper the kids were so excited that's so sweet of you guys we were very very thankful um so um thank you it kind of lifts their spirits and gets them excited and you know it's nice to see that people are watching these and they're interested and some people are learning some stuff i hope you're learning some stuff through some of the things we do um but anyways, all right, so that's kind of how our month of February has gone. Um, it's been interesting. We'll see how this work goes. Um, and it's nice to have a little bit of income again <laughs> after so long. So, all right, so we're going to cut up this cabbage. Um, I did start the brine. Let me go get the brine. Um, a few things you're going to need is mason jars sometimes there's all sorts of stuff you can look up for fermenting um we have a huge storage supply of mason jars i use it for everything for canning and just everything so um i put them in mason jars i'm going to assume that a whole cab head of cabbage will be about three to four quart jars so i have four quart jars here um, at Walmart, like I said, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, you have to weight, weigh down the vegetables in the brine that you're fermenting. Um, so you can even use a rock from outside. If you want to get a rock outside, that's going to fit in there <clears throat> and hold it down. Just make sure you boil the rock first, uh, to kill any germs and everything. Um, but these were really cheap from Walmart. It comes with these two springs and the two lids that allows air um, and the gases to come out, but not let any dirt and stuff like that in. So I think it was like four or five dollars. I so I ended up getting two. So I have two spring, four springs here and the four lids. Um, it just makes it easier. Sometimes, you know, I'm all about saving money, but also when you spend so much time doing these kind of things, sometimes it's just worth it to spend the money and get the equipment, especially when it's really only 4 or $5. It's just worth it. But that is up to you. So, what can I do for you, Sela? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Um, so, you have to make a brine. 
And depending on how much you're going to do, uh, my recipe is one quart of water, um, one to three tablespoons of sea salt. You cannot use table salt. It's got iodine in it. Um, and it will not work. It'll rot and get nasty. So you, um, I use the Himalayan pink sea salt. Um, you can do regular sea salt. So it's one quart of water, one to three tablespoons of sea salt. Um, and depending on what you're fermenting, um, there's different spices you can add. The combination that I like the most is one bay leaf, um, like a tablespoon of fennel seeds, and then maybe a teaspoon of ground coriander. Um, you could put uh, peppercorns in there. Um, when we do the cauliflower, the, like the gardenia fermentation mix, I'll put in raw pieces of garlic because um, those are just as delicious. Um, so the brine, I did. I doubled the batch, so I did two quarts. Um, I did four tablespoons of the sea salt. Um, two tablespoons fennel seed, I did one bay leaf, and about a tablespoon, one and a half, sorry, teaspoon of coriander. Um, you don't need to boil it, you just need to make sure the salt is um, mostly dissolved in the water. So I'm going to go grab the brine, and I probably should have been chopping this up while I was talking, but I wasn't. Mm. Um... So I guess I'll just have to find something else to talk about, say yeah. <laughs> while I chop this all up. Um, so when you put it into uh, the jars, uh, you're going to want to put as much in as you can. You can kind of scrunch it down a little bit, but you do want to leave some wiggle room. It's going to um, produce quite a bit of air bubbles, and that's a good sign. Um, sometimes it'll take you, <laughs> it'll take you back to smell it as it ferments it can kind of the kids don't like it but to me i know what it smells like it smells like their gardenia fermentation process so don't be worried if it starts to smell kind of <laughs> it's all part of the process what you don't want is any sort of black uh black mold or green mold pink mold anything like that growing on the surface um like I said, there's going to be air bubbles because that's the gas um, escaping. Um, sometimes you'll get like a little bit of a white film on top. That's okay. A lot of times that's kind of some evaporation and the salt going up on the top. Um, but it is going to smell a little bit. It's just all part of it. You know what sauerkraut smells like. And I'm sure most of you know gardenia for like antipasta salad, what that smells like. Um... When you're doing like the gardenia salad, um, you don't want to do super tiny pieces. You want them kind of in bigger chunks, um, whatever you're doing. You can ferment beets. Um, there's like a whole list you can look up. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying beets. But you want it so that the pieces aren't so tiny that they're just going to float up to the top. It's bound to happen once or twice. You'll get a piece to float to the top. That's okay. As long as it stays submerged in the water, it will be all right. Um, nope. You do want to um, keep most of it submerged in the brine as long as possible. Because once the air starts to get to it, um, it can ruin the fermentation process and it can start getting quite funky smelling so I'll just do one jar at a time so I guess fermented beets are well number one beets are really good for you to begin with but then fermented beets are even better for you <laughs> Bela says she doesn't like fermented stuff but I'm trying to teach her it's always good to try those things now and then so you can, your taste always changes. <laughs> I was not a huge fan of beets for a long time because when I was pregnant with Sayla, I could not keep anything down. I was losing so much weight. So Dan tried um, juicing fruits and vegetables so I can get some nutrients and stuff. And for the most part, it was pretty good. 
And then he decided, oh, you need iron. Let's juice a beet and put that in there. And, of course, I threw that up. And then I couldn't look at beets for years and years after that. <laughs> Sometimes the smell of beets still catches me and takes me back to those wonderful days of like all-day sickness. Not really morning sickness, all-day sickness. Yes. So it's been kind of frustrating not being able to walk normal. Um, the few times we've had to get out, um, like going to urgent care and stuff, uh, our neighbor Ray has picked us up on the snowmobile, which is such a blessing. I do not know what we would do <laughs> without Ray and Jan. It's so nice to have someone here um, year-round near us. Um, but the other times that we haven't had Ray take us, Dan has put me on the sled <laughs> and dragged me up, you know, almost a mile on just the sled. So... I'm sure that was quite a see, sight to see, but he's a good sport about it. Um, it is nice to be walking again. I haven't tried walking to the car yet the whole way. Um, I was going to try this past Sunday, and because I wanted to go to my mom's on Tuesday. Um, so I wanted to try walking the distance when Dan was with me to make sure I could do it. And if not, that he could pull me the rest of the way. But um, we got quite a bit of snow, about eight inches, I think. Um, and it was just, I'm just still too unsteady on it that I didn't want to risk walking in the snow and twisting my foot. So Kiki, get out of here. Apparently, Kiki is, uh, <laughs> wants to be on camera every time. Oh, dear. So, anyways, I'll eventually try walking the way. I'm just a little nervous, but we're supposed to get more snow. Um, I guess the storm's coming tonight into tomorrow. So, we won't be able to make it to Grandma's house, which is kind of sad. I really wanted to see. Hello, mister. You want a piece of cabbage? Dookie. <laughs> oh, dear. The dogs sometimes hear the coyotes out back, and then they go crazy. Um, and then we also had, like, a squirrel or something in the... Um, top of the cabin and it wasn't a mouse because it sounded a lot bigger <laughs> but it was just chewing away up there and it was driving low and nuts she just kept barking and barking because she could hear it but she couldn't get to it um, which most of the time it doesn't bother me when they bark because I like that they bark when they hear someone coming because I know someone's coming it's like an early you know warning <laughs> But uh, other times it's not so fun when it's three in the morning and she hears a noise outside because we have seen some um, animal prints that were quite large. Like there was one that looked like a dog print. It was like bigger than my palm. Um, and then there's another one that we just didn't recognize at all. At first we thought it was a bear, but, or no, we thought it was, what did you guys think it was? And then I thought it was a bear print. Um, yeah, like a bobcat. It definitely wasn't a coyote. We do have quite a few coyotes out here. Um, nobody else is here year-round, and no dog that I know of has got a paw print that big. And it was, the um, paw print we didn't know was, it was the size of my hand. Yeah, it was quite big. large. It was this, no, it wasn't the size of your it's, hand. It was bigger, and it was the size of my no, hand. that was a different one. Your hand's smaller than Sayo's. Yes. As big as my hand. Anyways, we have seen some other prints. We don't know quite what it's from. We've seen really tiny ones like foxes. Yeah. Do you think you could grab the pot off the wood stove and put it here on the... You'll need two oven mitts, yes. And walk careful, please. So, okay. Sayla has been come quite the cook lately. Helping Daddy cook. 
while I was laid up. So she's been a huge help. They've both been doing dishes, washing and drying and putting away. Thank you very much. Um, so that's been wonderful. Um, it's always nice when there's a lot of those little chores and stuff that you have to do every day and then you can pass them along to somebody else now. Um, at first they were super excited to do it because it was something new and fun. I get to wash dishes now. Um, but then about the third or fourth time it was like, I don't want to. But um, I had to teach them that it's part of everybody's life. Everybody has to wash dishes. And if you want to eat, you'll wash your dishes and get your chores done. So, all right. So this cabbage is going to take way more than the four quarts. But I'm going to go ahead and show you. Where's my little funnel? Oh, ooh, still quite a hobble hopping around certain angles and stuff. Really just hurt it. So here's my broth. Um, the salt's mostly dissolved. You are going to fill it up. Make sure it's over top of all the vegetables in there. Um, once all this is done, you're going to put your weight in and the lid on. Um, you're going to let it sit in a warm, dark place for about a week. Um, you're going to want to check it um, every couple of days just to make sure you're not getting mold. Sometimes what happens is as the gases are being released and coming through here, sometimes it'll get crusty and you'll have to go and loosen up the valve there. Um, so it's always good to check them every couple of days to see what's going on. All right, I'll probably put a little bit more in. Just to make sure there's enough. You kind of scrunch it down as much as possible. And then you're going to put your lid on. And then this, like I said, is going to sit in a um, warm, dark place five to seven days. Um, you'll see... Over the first couple of days, a lot of air bubbles floating to the top. That's all part of the process. It's fermenting. Um, usually when you see it stop um, bubbling, that means it's done. So I found usually about a week. I let it sit there. Then you put it in the fridge for about another week. And that kind of lets all the flavors mesh and mold together. Um, and then it's usually ready to eat. It lasts about six months in the fridge, so we'll be eating lots of cabbage. Um, I love being able to do this because if you have vegetables that are you just know you're not going to eat in time, you can just ferment them. So, um, like I said, you could do all sorts of stuff. You could do celery, all sorts of peppers, jalapenos, banana peppers, um, the cabbage, um, you can do green tomatoes, um, beets, um, I don't really know what else after that, but, um, it's, it's nice because it's the health benefit, but also it's just like everything else. When you make it at home, um, yeah, sometimes it's more work, but... It's just so much more satisfying knowing that you're the one that made it. So I will probably go back and fill up some of these jars a bit more once it settles for a few minutes. But it's quite easy once you learn how to do it. And it can be nerve-wracking. I was nervous the first time I did it because especially after I did it, I was nervous to eat it because I'm like, what if I can't botulism or something like that but I figure with the way medicine is nowadays if I happen to get botulism I'll just go to the hospital <laughs> but it tasted fine you have to really 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 screw things up to get that sick out of 
that kind of stuff. So I just don't worry about it anymore. It's the same thing when I tried canning meat for the first time, uh, pressure canning it. I was very, very nervous thinking that, again, I was going to get botulism or something. <laughs> but it's fine. People have done it for hundreds of years. My grandparents did it. My great-grandparents did it. And I don't know, honestly, why we ever got away from it. Mostly just because people are lazy <laughs> and they want whatever is convenient. But, you know, the whole reason why Dan and I chose to do this, some days I'm like, why in the world are we doing this? I hate it. Um, but then there's other times where, you know, when the electricity went out, it really didn't affect us at all because our heat is wood. We cook on our wood stove. Um, so that was really it. There was really no drawback to it. Um, and eventually we'll be looking into solar to try and get 100% off electricity. Excuse me. Um, so it is nice. It's nice to know that we are getting more independent. Um, we are in the springtime. We're going to start working on a chicken coop soon. Um, getting some chickens. So we'll have the meat. We'll be getting back into the quail. So the quail's mostly for meat to stock our freezer. Um, and the eggs are good for supplementing the dog food and the cat food. It really cuts down on that. <clears throat> um, the chickens for chicken eggs. And eventually when the chickens get old, they get into soup birds. Um, I was very tempted to start goats this year. Um, but just in case I end up needing surgery on my foot, I figure, you know, we still have to finish insulating. We're going to have to take the roof off in the spring and do it properly because it wasn't done properly for whoever built it. <clears throat> um, so we'll have to do that. We have to build a storage barn um, to get our stuff out of storage at the two places. And um, then, you know, put up a fencing for the dogs and... Um, there was something else. We need to put a back door on so we have a second exit out of the house. We also have to extend the loft to make the other half Creed's bedroom. So, and we have to make a shower because I am not going through another winter without a shower. I'm just not going to do it. Um, so we still have quite a bit to do this summer. Um, we are, part of the reason for Dan getting back to work and working so much is... We're trying to save money for a uh, sawmill because we've got, when we clear the land, we've got a lot of lumber that we can use. We won't have to go buy lumber um, for the barn and all that stuff. We can just make our own and that alone will save us thousands of dollars and we'll build it ourselves. So um, we've got a lot to do. <laughs> so we're going to put the goats off till probably the following year. Um, but then once we get the goat, we'll have the goat meat, goat milk, then we can make butter and that sort of stuff. I'm so excited to be making butter and cheeses, but one thing at a time, I suppose. Um, so this is quite a bit for us to do already. So once it's hard not to want to get into a little bit of everything, but we found it's better to conquer the one thing at a time and then add something else. And again, it's so nice to have the kids getting a little bit older. So normally for the cabbage, I would just have Sayla cut it all up. And that saves me having to do that part. Um, Creed does the kindling cracker. So he does that part. Um, so there's a lot that, you know, the kids have been doing and picking up. Um, again, you know, Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, we don't overload them, but we also have expectations for our children. Um, so it's hard sometimes to strike a balance. It's hard to remember sometimes they're not an adult. And they do need, you know, so that grace that, okay, well, you know what? Just don't worry about it today. Mommy will do it. Go do what you want to do for a while. Um and if anybody has any suggestions whatsoever on how to get Creed to learn his alphabet, I have tried 
Go Fish games. I've tried memory games. I don't know what to do. I am starting to lose patience and just say, who cares? <laughs> um, so if there's any teachers out there, if there's parents that have children that are on the overactive side and the sensory side, and you have any suggestions, let me know if you want to research and let me know. I will love you forever. I'm just kind of at a loss as what to do. Um, I'm not going to give up. I just am going to keep trying different things. Um, Sayla is doing great. She's her numbers. She's wonderful with numbers, addition and subtraction. And she's reading really well. Um, Creed is really good at his numbers too. Um, so that's awesome. They, they love science. They love outdoors. Um, so they're really, they're really doing well. We're just really stuck on Creed learning his letters and stuff like that. He'll be seven in May. Um, so it, it's really got to get done. I just, I mean, how do you make someone who refuses to, I mean, what do you do? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll start giving him chocolate every time. We'll just give him chocolate. So, all right. Um, if you guys have any questions about fermenting, let me know. Um, I hope I didn't ramble too much and, um, I hope you guys will give it a try and start learning some of these things to do by yourself. It's very exciting. It can be nerve wracking, but again, if you have questions, let me know. Um, I find this stuff very fascinating. I find it fun. I'm looking forward to the summer doing more peaches and applesauce and canning more vegetables. Um, we're going to do a lot more foraging. Dan has big plans for our garden. Um, so we're really excited about the summer. I don't think I've ever been so excited for spring and summer to get here. I've enjoyed the winter being in. Um, it really hasn't been that bad, but it's like, you know, it's just totally different way of life than the normal rat race you're in and the normal it's just totally different. Um, it's very peaceful. It's hard work, but it's so rewarding. Um, it's peaceful. There are drawbacks. You know, like yesterday, I was really missing my mom. I really wanted to see her. I really wanted to see my grandma. Um, but, you know, it just didn't work out. I know spring is coming, so I keep trying to remind myself that. But every now and then, there are some hard days. Um... But I'm really looking forward to spring, really looking forward to summer, to get outside. We probably won't have any grass, <laughs> so we'll have to see the whole lawn. There's still a lot of work to do, um, but I'm sure we will bring you along with us, and you'll get to see us and what we do, and I hope you guys have a good day.